السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah, whomsoever Allah leads astray no one can guide I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is his servant and messenger Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري فحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I greet you all in the universal peace and uh, greeting of Islam uh, in peace uh, being upon you. Uh, and we begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful as always. So this khutbah today, I've uh, had many different titles coming around, but uh, one title that uh, has been lifted up here is uh, the beauty of patience. And I more or less uh, when I when I gave an iteration of this khutbah at the uh, prison last week is is more along the lines of trusting the process, you know, and, and 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 thinking about patience. But we hear a lot of times in our faith, in the Quran, and the Hadith, and especially from other Muslims, uh, to be patient, to be people who are patient, and uh, especially in times of calamity, in times of difficulty, uh, we're oftentimes just told, "Hey, be patient, just be patient." You know, being patient is what uh, is Islamically appropriate. So just be patient. But what does this patience look like? Um, you know, sometimes this patience can be very romanticized to be very monolithic, um, to be just like we're going through whatever kind of cataclysmic event or loss or catastrophe, but patience, you know, just, just be like a statue uh, and, and, and don't, you know, don't, don't do anything. Being patient is just supposed to look like, you know, you're uh, stoic, you're monolithic, and regardless of what else is coming on, that's patience. And I, I want to push back a little bit on that, given what our faith not just talks about, but how our faith has been experienced by those who have come before us. Um, so think of ourselves, uh, and, and, and in a sense, our own lives, our individual beings, think of us as uh, ships on a journey on the sea. You know, we're going to go through the waters, many of us in different boats, different ways, shapes, and forms, and we're going to encounter, uh, you know, crashing waves, we're going to encounter storms, we're going to encounter the various rhythms of the sea, you might even encounter pirates, you know, you encounter, encounter the various trepidations that may feel, but the point is that uh, your, your boat is going to continue to be uh, hit time after time again by these waters, it's going to be crashed against, it's, uh, you're, and, and, and if we are just to treat patience as something static, uh, it would say that, oh, you know, just trust the journey, just be patient, and just let the boat take its course, you know, just be patient with it. Don't do anything. You know, just just stay in there. But we know that as these uh, these these waves crash, as the the ship kind of goes back and forth, there may be things that we need to address. It might it's going to leak eventually. The sail is going to get torn. Different parts of it are going to need to be repaired. In events where it's so catastrophic that the ship sinks, we have to have a contingency plan to be able to get out. We have to have a lifeboat in a sense. Um, so. Patience, in a sense, needs to be something that is dynamic, just as you would be on a boat when you are uh, mindful of different things that are happening, you're mindful of, of whatnot, you are uh, bearing conscientiously that this ship is going off course, that I need to do something to redirect it, that not just I just sit back here and just watch it and I'm being patient because I'm going to let this just play out its way. No, being patient is something that's dynamic. Being patient is an active quality, not a passive quality. So true patience is also that, which is apart from just being active and dynamic, is one that is not absent of emotion or of pain or expression. Um, we sometimes see that when, when people are grieving, when people are infuriated, when they're angry, uh, we oftentimes maybe see people tell them or, or try and bypass them and say, be patient, be patient. So just completely take this from 100 to zero. And that's what patient is. No. So we have 
the example of uh, our prophets, of our um, pious predecessors, of how this expressing of patience, how them their, this quality of patience, embodying this patience is very dynamic. Um, we see our own Prophet وسلم, after the loss of his son, Ibrahim, who here would disagree with the statement that the Prophet وسلم, was the most patient person to have ever walked the earth, the most patient creation of Allah. Most people would not, uh, most Muslims would not disagree with that, that the Prophet وسلم, modeled each and every value and ethic and quality of humanity to the highest degree that is possible, and patience is no exception. So when we look at the Prophet وسلم, we see someone who we mark and we understand as patient, as persevering. Yet, in the example of the Prophet وسلم, we have a rich complexity, we have a dynamic in which you see in the example when he uh, loses his son, when his son, his last son um, Ibrahim passes away uh, in infancy and the Prophet وسلم, is holding this child. The Prophet وسلم, before his son got sick was someone who would take his son to the mosque to show people because this was a man ridiculed from the beginning that you're not going to have a successor. You're not going to have a son. Your, your sons are not uh, you know, living past you. All these different der derisions that are said, these derogatory comments, uh, and also then the lived experience of his own children passing away before him. We know that only only Fatima, his daughter, was the one to outlive him, and she passed away shortly after. But he was someone who, uh, apart from raising his children, also buried his children. So thinking about all these different things that are going on for him, and in this moment, his last son passes away in his arms. And in holding the son, he, he, he begins to weep, he begins to cry. And his companions are like, Ya Rasulullah, what, what is this? What, what are these? And he says, this is a mercy. The, the tears are a mercy. And he looks at his deceased son, who's take, who takes his last breaths in his arms. It's a very emotional scene. Takes his last breaths in his arms. And he says, the eyes are weeping. The eyes are crying and shedding tears. The heart is sad and his heart is broken. But the mouth and the tongue will not utter that, except which pleases our Lord. We sometimes see patience as black and white. This example shows patience in the complexities and the layers and the beautiful colors that it all is in. The Prophet modeled that patience that he, in this example, in the loss of his son, I can summarize that the Prophet was patient when his son Ibrahim was sick and when he passed away. But I do it an injustice when we just say that when we think of patience as just a, uh, a narrow, static, uh, and very hollowed out term. Patience is complex. And the Prophet Sallam shows us that this patience was modeled not absent of emotion. The patience was modeled by the restraining of the tongue, by doing something that, uh, that was displeasing to the Lord. It's not displeasing to the Lord to shed tears and to cry, which is a sign of mercy, as the Prophet Sallam said. It's not uh, it's not a uh, violation or a not a showing of impatience that the heart is broken. The heart will break. The heart experiences sadness. Human emotion is real. But patience is to be able to restrain. Patience is to be able to have that cognizance that uh, one will not utter, one will not do that except which pleases that their Lord. And it was not displeasing to the Lord to cry, to show emotion, to uh, have your heart broken and to, to be sad in that moment. You have the example of Maryam, السلام, who would not say that she was a patient woman, who was given the word of Allah as a child and as a, as a woman to, to conceive a child without having been touched by a man, uh, to be told by her community, Maryam, what have you done? This is a thing unheard of, to withdraw from her family into the East, to be alone in the wilderness, to be all the way out there. Who would not say that Maryam was a patient woman? As we see in the Quran, we have that Maryam was already tasked with this. Uh, this she knew what was going to happen. She was given forewarning of of this of this uh, this miracle that was to take place. Yet still, when she is in the pangs of giving birth, I cannot relate to this. But the women who may be listening to this space, the women in our life, can relate to it. Um, that our own mothers can relate to this. That the the pangs of childbirth are something that uh, that are. Uh, undescribable in that sense. It, it, it's, it's a, especially if you're in the wilderness, you don't have uh, a space to be able to have like an epidural or be induced or anything like that. And no care, I can only imagine what that is like. And Maryam in this space, experiencing the pangs of birth, experiencing the suffering, shouts out that, oh, I wish how I, I wish how I had never been born. Um, and, and this seeking 
this is just releasing that you know i wish i was not here this is not this is not ideal i wish i was never born i wish i was not experiencing this hardship and we don't see the angel of allah come to maryam and say hey you know we already told you about this so um stop being impatient you know this is part of the process we didn't see her get chastised we see the angel come and tell maryam don't be grieved comes and cares for Maryam and says, shake the trunk of the tree, eat the, uh, the dates that will fall and drink from the water that uh, the stream that is running below, you know, take, eat of these things, you know, do all these different things. Um, and, and you see in this, in this aspect, Allah and the spirit of Allah and the angel and the divine comfort that comes to Maryam is not one that says, hey, be patient or do this. Be, do, you know, don't, don't stop being, uh, you know, complaining about this. Uh, but we know Maryam as well as a patient woman. We see Maryam back as someone charged with and tasked with giving birth to a child on her own, knowing all the social, economical, and uh, spiritual implications that may come with that and, and the societal outcry that might come with that. Yet we don't say Maryam was an impatient woman, but we see in this, in this aspect that Maryam was given that space to be fully human, to be able to share her, her, uh, her, her, her grief, to be able to give that complaint, yet we see the divine comfort responding to her, not to chastise her, understanding the pain and the, 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 the difficulty she is facing and being able to lift up for her, take comfort, Maryam. Here's, here's something to help you. Here's, here's a respite for you. Um, and the, what, what Maryam said is what we can see is very much a provocative statement but understood within that context. And, and so you see Maryam in the space took of that. She, she what, what Allah gave her, she took of that. And she did go from there bearing that patiently, had the child, was given, give, gave birth to Isa alayhi salam, but comes back to her community who have said, Maryam, indeed, you've done a, a, a thing unheard. You've done a, something that we, this is strange. Like, you know, what have you done? And imagine just the patience that she has in this space to, to, to the, the forbearance in that. It wasn't absent of emotion. We see that here. So we can only imagine that she as a patient woman, our Prophet as a patient person, what did they exhibit in these spaces to still be patient, yet knowing that they weren't absent of emotion. We also see the example that is referred to in the Quran of Ayyub alayhi salam, that, uh, that as a uh, prophet as a servant of Allah, that he was someone of marked patience and perseverance. And it's very interesting to see the connection to the biblical narrative. In the Quran, we have a few verses that highlight uh, Ayyub and uh, his, his patience and known as a person of patience. So the Quran knows him as a person of patience. And when we look to a complementing extent of the relevant aspects of the biblical scriptures that uh, lift up the story of Job, uh, Ayub or Job uh, in 40 chapters, we have a very complex kind of narrative. We have a, a large narrative, but a takeaway, one, one part of the takeaway that we can see in that uh, is this aspect of patience, that when he is incurring loss of wealth, his children are passing, his uh, estate has gone away, he's diseased, he's, he's going through physical ailments, all these different things, that he is remaining patient through that. It, obviously, if you go through all these things, you're going to suffer. You're going to you're, you're going to cry. You're going to have these grief. You're going to have these exhibitions of all these different uh, emotions. But at the end of the day, the Quran lifts up his patience and perseverance. And so, when we look at the story in detail, at least as what we can take away from it, it was very difficult for him. It was it was challenging for him. He had to face his family members, his wife, his uh, the, the his friends around, and had to be patient despite uh, these different suggestions and. And, uh, cries to just curse God and just you know do without it like you know what what what's grounding you in your faith yet someone who stayed in that but suffered in that space so seeing that he was elevated in his rank as a as someone that was patient lifted up as a person of patience because of the fact that he was holding true to this yet he didn't mean he just he, he was uh, completely unfeeling or whatnot so thinking about this sense so patience is something that we work on. It's lifelong. It's not something we can just inherit like this. And now we're people of patience. We work towards it, but we, 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 we work towards becoming more and more patient. We maybe have certain thresholds of it, but we can work towards becoming it when we start to see that patience is not just a, uh, a hollowed out aspect or a benchmark that we can achieve. We work on it daily. And we, we get impatient as human beings, we will get impatient. Uh, we had the example of our Prophet in Surah Abasa as 
giving proselytizing and preaching to a powerful member of a tribe uh, of the Quraysh and getting interrupted by a blind man. Um, and uh, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, who comes and asks the prophet for uh, you know, some teachings and some wisdoms, and he gets, he gets a little uh, annoyed by this. He, he frowns. You know, we can only read into the text, but he frowns. We can assume that there's aspects of impatience that are there, uh, that it's, it's just this, this, this uh, frustration that's there. Yet we see Allah correct the Prophet ﷺ. It doesn't remove this narrative. There's this something powerful in showing the development of the Prophet ﷺ by showing this aspect where he had to be corrected and along his journey, rather than just showing him in one complete narrative that's only good, that does not get any corrections, you have this aspect of growth. If the Prophet ﷺ can grow and improve from this experience, what about us? You have the example of Umar عنها, that after uh, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when the Prophet ﷺ accepts the concessions of the Meccans, turns around the whole kind of Muslim Ummah to go back to Medina after they had come forth for pilgrimage, to turn around these whole, everything uh, along with the other circumstances that were there, you have Omar lift up that um, are we not the are we not Muslims? Are we not on the truth and they are on the falsehood? And like you know, are are we not God's righteous people, God's guided people, and they are the idolaters and everything? And uh, how we see in in the in, in the Prophet Sun's example how uh, after this this incident Surah Fat was revealed that indeed there's been a a manifest victory, you've achieved a manifest victory, not in the conquering of Mecca, not in going into Mecca, but in the uh this in this turnaround, in this in this rejection by the Meccans, you've achieved a great victory. And why is that? We see in the next year um, how the Muslims are able to not only come for the pilgrimage, but because of this violation of what is understood to be common, uh, a common right for everybody in that time to come to Mecca to uh, do the pilgrimage, uh, we see the allies of the Meccans start to capitulate and start to um, you know, turn on them and see that this was not something that was right. And so this incident that looks like a loss actually became a victory. And in that sense, Omar uh, reflects back that I wish I had just a little bit more patience. I wish I hadn't said what I had said. Um, and, and you see in, in this sense that that patience was uh, that that he he was someone that that struggled with that he struggled with it yet it was a process that he had to endure that in order to kind of see it and same thing for the other Muslims they had to go through those difficult things in order to see the longer term benefit and so we as Muslims need to also be enablers of patience for each other help ourselves help others to shoulder one another's burdens and we'll close inshallah by sharing uh, a few verses of the Quran that just lift up patience. So when we talk about patience, we often say abstract, but to just quickly share a few verses of the Quran. Um, in chapter 11, Allah says, be patient. Allah does not let the rewards of those who do good go to waste. So knowing that what we do in this life as Muslims does not just wither away as soon as that action is done, or as soon as the day is over, that that action is unregistered, that benefit, that good deed we do uh, is, is just wasted. No, what we do as uh, is often <laughs> cited in Gladiator from uh, Maximus or Russell Crowe is that what we do in life echoes in eternity. The, the deeds we do in this life as our faith teaches us is registered in the time to come, the time that will matter. So being patient with the process, trust the process that it will continue to benefit uh, beyond this. And uh, in, 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 uh, in the Quran, it also says in chapter 16 that, and bear with patience, and your patience is only with the help, because of the help of Allah. And do not grieve over them or feel distressed by their evil plans, uh, referring to those who are uh, working against you. And so thinking about that, this aspect, bear with patience, and your patience is only because of the help of Allah. Oftentimes we feel that we need to just be patient, and then Allah's help will come. But seeing your patience is because of the help of Allah. You being patient is Allah reinforcing and giving you that strength, that Allah is with you. Is Allah has not left you. Allah is not just going to come because you're going to be patient. Allah is there when you are exercising your patience. In chapter 30, it says, so be patient. Surely Allah's promise is true. And do not let the disbelievers shake your, your firmness, telling you that not only does Allah's, pay, Allah's help come with this patience, but Allah's promise is true in that which is to come. So be patient because Allah's promise is true and it gives this, this word. See, in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, in the second chapter, it says, seek help with patience and prayer, though this is hard indeed for anyone but the humble. 
seeking help with patience and prayer. Um, patience and prayer going hand in hand, that prayer can be a tool for patience, but seeking help, finding that respite comes with patience, comes with prayer in, in exchange. So uh, there's that tangible benefit of patience and prayer that help will come and not just a, a kind of a tangible help, but an abstract kind of a help as well, that you have this holistic help that comes. In chapter 41, only those who are steadfast in patience, those who are blessed with uh, blessed with great righteousness will attain to such goodness. Being patient is a process. It's not just a one-time thing that you do and then you're done and say, hey, I was patient. Patience is something you work on. We saw this in the examples of our pious predecessors. In the Quran, in the in Shura al-Imran, the third chapter says, O ye who believe, persevere in patience and constancy, vie in such perseverance, compete in such perseverance, strengthen each other and be pious that you may prosper. This is a, uh, a communal act. This is a, co a combined cooperative effort that we work together in such perseverance. We strengthen each other. We are doing what we can to be patient, but we compete with one another in a positive sense. We encourage each other through our own expressions of patience, through our uh, lack of patience sometimes and our, our growth. We encourage each other to grow. In the Quran, it says, chapter eight, and obey Allah as messenger and do not quarrel with one another, lest you should lose courage and your power depart. Be patient. Surely Allah is with those who remain patient. Again, we talked about Allah is with those who remain patient. And chapter uh, so three, Surah al muran says that how many of the prophets fought and with them fought large bands of men, and they never lost heart if they met with this disaster in Allah's way, nor did they weaken in will, nor give in. And Allah loves those who are firm and steadfast. In Surah Luqman, uh, it says, Oh, my son, keep up the prayer, command beneficence, and forbid maleficence, and uh, endure patiently whatever might afflict you. Surely that is an indication of true resolve concerning his commands. And lastly, in, in Surah Baqarah, Allah says that, Surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger, loss in goods, loss in life, and loss of the fruits of your toil. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. Those who say, when afflicted with calamity, to Allah we belong, to Allah is our return. They are those on whom descend blessings from their Lord and mercy. They are the ones who receive guidance. These are the people who we recognize as prophets as well. These are the people who are the pious predecessors that afflicted with all these different things, yet they, uh, the lips, their tongues utter, to Allah we belong, to Allah we return. But we see the complexity in patience is not just that they were stoic while all this happened, they experienced loss, they experienced grief, they experienced tears, they experienced emotional roller coasters, they experienced all these different things, they experienced all of the spectrums of the emotion, or the emotions on the spectrum. And so they did not just stay stoic, but overall, they became people of patience because as our Prophet some taught, maybe their eyes wept, maybe their hearts broke, maybe their hearts were sad, but their mouths, their tongues, and their actions did not do that except which pleased their Lord. And in their circumstance, we see as with Maryam, Allah came to them, Allah uh, provide that divine respite when it became untenable for them. They, they, they just, they had to release, they had to let go, that it did not draw, you know, send Allah away or send the help of Allah away, it actually brought it nearer. It brought that comfort. So see that as we as people, how can we become not just individuals that want to achieve patience as a metric, but be patient as a part and parcel of our being and as humans. Inshallah, we conclude with this. We ask Allah to guide us, guide us all to the right path, path of those who Allah has bestowed our the favor and not of those who have incurred Allah's displeasure to make us people of patience, to make us uh, those who encourage others to patience, to make us those as our pious predecessors were people who trust in the process, who trust in becoming patient, but trust in the belief and the uh, truth that Allah has uh, that awaits us afterwards, to be patient with any difficulty that befalls us, that we may never be left as people without emotion or expression, but that we be guided as people of steadfastness and forbearance. We ask us to, Allah to allow us to leave this Jummah better than we came into it, and allow us to leave every place better than we come, uh, every place that we come to better it and uh, to improve it better than we had entered it. And we ask Allah to make from our sins, from our mistakes, from our tears, from our difficulties, from our hardships, and from their overcoming, from the repentance, from uh, the corrections of these space, and from the growth opportunities of continued growth.
purification and excellence. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majeed. O oh Allah, bestow your favor upon the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as you bestowed your favor upon the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Rabbana taqabal minna inna ka anta sami'u al-alim. Rabbana wa taqabal dua. Our Lord, accept this from us. Accept this service from us. Indeed, you are all hearing, all knowing, and accept this prayer from us. Bakhro wa dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And Jumaa Mubarak to you all and your families.